Read the description, but this is basically for people who can't get past the first part of the game on Tactician difficulty. The early game is by far the hardest that I've found, and the determining fight if you can handle the difficulty, I think, is trying to get some croc skin gloves. And that's because your gear is utter garbage early. After that, the game becomes actually enjoyable. So let's get started. I'm going to be fast forwarding a lot since who the hell watches 2 hours of gameplay in one sitting? And it took me like 10 minutes to decide what the appearance of my elf should be. Uh, don't judge. This is my setup, which is pretty much the summoner build for my other video, <coughs> self-promotion. <coughs> Uh, but pretty much any build can work. This is also my first time actually taking Lucky Charm, so we'll see how it goes. I'm basically looting everything that's worth at least 20 gold. This slim here will give you adrenaline if you eat it. Uh, Bedrill here recovers your HP after a fight. Gotta get them tasty recipes, like how combining a hammer with a potato gives you mashed potatoes. I suggest you go around and talk to the members of your breakfast club here, if this is your first time playing. Wines and ink pots are worth quite a bit, I suggest you hoard those to sell for later. You actually don't need to pick lock or get the key for this door, you can literally just break it down. Definitely not made by the dwarves. I don't think you can pass the persuasion check here without actually having a point of persuasion, uh, but these guys are pretty easy and are pretty much half dead anyways. This dog that's here is hard as hell. Notice how there's like no source monsters specifically in this room, you probably eat them all. I suggest you not fight it unless you have some hard CC or going this build. It's best to start making the dog punts right now. Uh, some examples are Life is Rough, Bark at the Moon, and... Oh, it looks like one of his canines was loose. Again, pretty much loot the entirety of the ship. Don't bother with junk that's worth less than 20 gold unless it's crafting supplies. Uh, don't stand in death fog, it will kill you. Read the tutorials, that won't kill you. Uh, pretty much basic stuff as expected from the tutorial level. Uh, buckets make the best helmets, etc, uh, etc. Et that barrel movement took like 10 minutes in game time, so totally worth it. Uh, now we can kill this dying magister from the very beginning for some easy XP. Uh, pro tip, if you actually have a conversation with her and go to the trade menu, after you kill her you'll actually be able to loot all the stuff that you see in the trade menu, but if you don't access the trade menu you won't be able to loot it. Now it's time for you to reunite with the breakfast club. Assume the role of hard carry and do just that. Notice how no one thanks you after saving them? Uh, prepare to make Flash sacrifice your primary skill and become Batman. No time, my ass! I'm like right fucking there! So off the boat is where the bulk of this guide starts. Your priority, as usual, is to loot anything you see that's worth something. Shells are not worth anything, so I wouldn't bother. Uh, the first encounter can actually be skipped if you wanted to. You can go get your companions to make this fight easier. This is probably the last fight before the gator battle, so everything else should be gear finding. I put my points into scoundrel so I can eat the limb to get the free adrenaline book. I brought it up with the prince, made him a lizard wizard, all's good with the world. Follow this path underneath this broken bridge. Pick up any penny bun bun mushrooms and yarrow flowers you stumble across, uh, they are useful for creating healing potions. Uh, moving eastward, if you have at least 10 wits, you'll find a place where you can dig. Since we have a lizard in our party, we do not need a shovel. In here, there's a darling bow, which is much better than our current one. What do you call an unstrung crossbow at a football stadium? A T-bow. Uh, if you don't have a shovel, you can go westward and find a shovel here next to a crepe. Also a bedroll, just in case you didn't grab one while you are on the boat.
I go back to where you found the darling bow. There is a hidden way here to feign as well as a poison barrel. Uh, pick both of them up. Uh, worst case, you can use them as a toothpick. I made Fane a lockpick. I, I mean a scoundrel, so he can bone me up later. After this, just continue on playing the game as normal until you get to Fort Joy. Uh, to pass the time, here's a fun fact. Mole rats never get cancer. And as such, they are killed to study why they do not. Uh, once you unlock the waypoint, uh, teleport back to the beach and put our poison barrel there, since it weighs like 60 kilos. Now let's go around and admire the goods that we could steal, uh, but we're not because we have a self-imposed challenge to accomplish for some reason. Uh, if we follow around here, we can find Maiko, Miko, Amigo. Uh, as long as you have a Yarrow Flower in your inventory, if you talk to him, he will give you a ring if you choose the fourth option. If you do not have the flower, he will attack you, and you will probably die. So, be warned. I equip Amigo's ring and cast Restoration on the dying person here. If you talk to him, he'll give you the Sparkler card. After you obtain the card, uh, follow the path back to basically where the square is. Go up the ladder to the west and participate in the gambling game. I uh, play the sparkler card, but do not tell them where you got it, and you will gain a lot of money. We are rich, biatch. Uh, this is the chick the Geist was looking for. Her name is Yarrow, coincidentally. And we can give her the ring, and then she'll go to him, and we can kill them both. But since they're kind of high level at the moment, uh, we'll wait to do that later. So just go down here and let's talk to Gawain. This is the guy who's going to give us the task to get some croc skin gloves. Ah, uh, just some random looting, because you know it's an RPG and no one's stuff is safe. So I'm on my way to recruit our fourth companion, Beast. Uh, we're going to make him a warrior in our tank. Uh, but on the way there, we stumble upon an assassin for the Red Prince. I try to avoid him, but I could not. I even teleported out, and he still was following me, so we had to we had to put him down. This was a tough fight with three people. I really do recommend having four, but we persevered through it. Woo. Obviously, the carry had no problems. Do not be afraid to use your potions early. We picked up so many mushrooms and there's going to be so many healing potions early on that it doesn't even matter if you die because we still have like what, six resurrect scrolls across the three of us. So it's not even a problem even if you do die. Man, this guy sucks to fight. At the very beginning he threw pocket sand at me. And I'm blinded, and it's just it's just been a bad time since, like, all oh, my dudes are almost dying, but, you know. At times like this, I have to look down and see that there's something between my legs, and we're just going to go for it, man. I made Beast a fighter, so he can be some sort of tank. So I gave him any kind of uh, high physical armor or any of my other party members to him, because he's probably going to be the one who's frontline. <laughs> I would try to see if you only needed a mask to hide the fact that you're undead, but sadly I think you need both pants and a shirt and a helmet. I looted stuff around the crux, and since we don't have uh, anyone in the party who has thievery, I just stole the chest and we're going to put it back on the beach next to the ooze barrel. So when we do have thievery, it'll be right there to open. I totally forgot to get the Spirit Brachus Rex, so we're going to go inside and go do that. Uh, to get it, all you have to do is either have high wits, and you'll notice that there's a spot you can dig. You can either also have a dwarf in your party and you can go through a hole next to the wall, or you can play the game of hide and seek with the kids to also unlock it. I think this is the only item in the Brachus Rex set that doesn't actually do a harmful effect against you. Also you may notice that the weapon is level 3 and we are level 2. 
Uh, if you equip higher level weapons, you suffer an accuracy penalty. Uh, so now I'm going to be preparing for the crocodile fight. I'm going to be crafting some potions, as well as poisoning every single weapon I have. All you got to do is combine the ooze barrel with the weapons, and the weapons will not have the poison effect. I went to around every merchant and sold all my stuff. And instead of buying any of the expensive gear, I actually looked and bought some of the cheapest gear. Since not all my party members even have clothes, I think it's more efficient just to buy the cheapest gear since they scale off of level anyways and equip it to your full party rather than just one item that gives a lot of armor. Isn't watching someone sort through their items like the most cancerous thing ever? Like, oh my god. He's still going. What a douche. Now we should be ready for the crocodile fight. Let's go. Uh, so pointers about the crocodiles. The crocodiles all have the move fossil strike, which throws a rock at you and causes a whale to spread. Uh, it's probably in your best interest to spread your party out, because it's really freaking annoying for your melee characters uh, to use double the AP just to get close to them. They can't cast it every turn, and their only other attack is a melee attack, so they'll either teleport or just walk next to you to try to hit you. And that's why in this clip I had Beast only move two moves, so I don't want to waste the moves getting closer to them when I knew that next turn they're probably going to get close to him instead. I was pretty cocky, so I didn't actually use the formation tab. When you press escape, you can actually set your party formation so they could be more spread out. Since they're all close together, they always get hit with the auto strikes. So with Sebel, I'm trying to basically conjure an incarnate, and I don't want to actually conjure a normal one because any of the elemental ones are so much better. Uh, for one, the alligators actually do not have any magic armor, and two, the blood one also can heal itself, so both would be way better than just a normal one. I'm trying to oil them as well because they are focusing my squishy people and I don't want them to come up and I'd rather them focus uh, Fane or Beast. Uh, so Fane's back and he almost has full AP. I should have probably popped Adrenaline last turn. Uh, since Adrenaline makes you lose 2 AP, that means I could have played dead for another turn to regain all of it back. At this point I really needed to CC one of the crocodiles so they wouldn't kill me. If they're right next to you I'm pretty sure they attack twice and that would literally probably take all the health from any party member at the moment. I decided to play pretty ballsy and suffer the opportunist attack and that was probably a bad idea but I did it anyway just to petrify the gator that's closer to the right. And Bloodsucker healed me for 5 HP. That was... I, sh I should have just drank a pot. I was in a pretty shitty situation. I uh, said I could have just attacked one of them for the bonus high range damage, but I decided to summon Elemental Totem because they kept spamming Fortify and magic damage will always do damage to them. And you know elves and how OP they are. So they should just cast Elf Harm so that there's blood on the floor, Elemental Warheads on the blood, Adrenaline for that extra attack, and just kill the Gator, man. Uh, 360 no scope. Easy. At this point, I just pretty much try to not to die. I uh, basically by CCing any of the Gators. Thank God Incarnate had Taunt.
Uh, even with the taunt, the Gator still one-shot him. And if it wasn't for the Incarnate, I'm pretty sure Fane would have died. Uh, thankfully, we bought Beast the uh, Battle Stomp skill. Completely uh, knocked that Gator down. And we just poked them. Uh, when it was Sebel's turn, we could either play it safe or play it risky. I played it risky because I wanted to conserve the knockdown arrow, but we could have just used the knockdown arrow to knock down the Gator, so there's a 100% guarantee that he CC'd. But instead, I just went for the ballsy play of try trying to kill him outright. Now we have a knockdown Gator, easy to take down. Uh, pretty much Gator food. Uh, worst case scenario, we have Beast, he still has Battle Ram, knocks the Gator down again, then we just we just kill him outright. Easy peasy. If you manage to get this far in your tactician playthrough, you're pretty much mastered the game and can continue onwards by yourself. Uh, killing these crocs is probably the hardest portion due to the gear available and we just overcame it. Hopefully. Well, at, at least you watched me overcome it. Woo! Uh, so I'll go onwards and have fun. And hopefully you don't try to make a video that you would think would take only like 3 or 4 hours and it apparently takes like 12 hours because starting with a video and then adding a script to it is like the hardest thing ever. Obligatory like and subscribe. Hopefully at least one person found this useful. Sorry for the bad content. I'll see you in the next one.